Welcome to a short presentation on some of the conversion utilities that FTDI have released to support the new FT800 display, audio and touch controller device. There are three utilities available at present, an image conversion utility, an audio conversion utility and a font conversion utility. The image conversion utility is available to provide images that are avail or accessible by the FT800. It will convert from a, an existing format into something the FT800 may read. Similarly, the audio conversion utility will allow for audio files to be converted from a .wav WAV format into a signed 16-bit PCM that the FT800 can understand. With the font utility, this allows users to create a user-defined font for displaying characters and symbols that are perhaps not available in the default fonts supplied by the FT800. All of the tools will create two types of output file in the converted file and that is the raw data and the raw header file. The raw file is a binary format of the converted file which may be used directly by the bitmaps command in the FT800. The raw header file is a text representation of the same data. With the image and audio uh, conversion utilities there are an additional two types of output file, binary and binary header. These are essentially compressed versions of the raw and raw header files. To access the data from the binary, the command inflate command is required to inflate the data before using it. So starting with the image conversion utility, why would you need this tool? Well, obviously you may have existing images that you have taken from a camera or generated elsewhere and you would like the FT800 to drive these images to a display. This utility allows you to create compatible bitmaps or JPEG images. Other graphical objects such as points, which is our term for a circle, lines or rectangles are available within the FT800 command structure and so no additional conversion is required. A limitation within this conversion tool is that it will not resize or rotate images. This can be done with many other free Windows or Linux based utilities such as Paint, Photoshop or GIMP. These utilities should be used to ensure the file is of a size that fits the final LCD you wish to display on. I have mentioned that JPEG is supported with the FT800. This is true for baseline JPEG images, but not progressive JPEG images. The basic uh, difference between baseline and progressive is that baseline will draw the full image from top left to bottom right whereas Progressive puts out a, an initial image and gets progressively better with each scan. More details can be seen at the web link on this slide. And for more details of GIMP, which is a more powerful open source utility, you can go to the web link at the bottom of this slide. So to run the image tool, you need a Windows operating system and a command line, an MS-DOS window. The tool is called img underscore cvt and by typing this in you can see the nine formats that we can convert to which the FT800 will support. To use the utility you must put the file that you wish to convert in the same path as the executable. After running the utility, 
you will observe that a new directory is created. This directory will have the name which matches the file name you tried to convert and the format that you converted to. In this case, linaface40.png was converted to a linaface file of an RGB565 format. If you are using a palleted format, there is an additional folder created which creates the, the four types of file, which is the raw, raw header, binary and binary header. Looking at the code, how would this be used? Well, the raw data that you would see from the raw header file looks something like this. And this is a full expanded image. In the application code, you would simply call this file and load it, in this case, at address 0 of the graphics RAM to be displayed with the command bitmaps. If you had used the, uh, the binary, which is the compressed version, you would need to have command inflate to use it. And you can see an example of command inflate being called here. The binary file, which was pointed to with pfile, is the file that is being inflated. You can see that we have a command to open the file dot bin, which is the binary. The second utility that we are talking about is the audio conversion utility and as I say this is for converting a WAV formatted file to a format that the FT800 can support. This utility only supports mono signed 16-bit PCM WAV files as the input. If you are starting from a different source there is a free utility such as Audacity which has more power and more capability which may be used license-free to convert your file. Again, this tool runs on Windows from an MS-DOS command line window. There are three formats that may be outputted from this file. 8-bit signed, 8-bit micro law and 4-bit IMA ADPCM. Again, you would put the file that you want to convert into the same folder as the executable. And the output is put into a directory where the name matches the file name with the format you have converted to. The final conversion tool to talk about is the font conversion tool. This allows a user to create fonts that are not supplied by default with the FT800. So it is for use with your own a true type font. If you plan to use your own true type font, it has to be installed on Windows before using the font conversion tool. And the tool will only accept characters in the source file from location one to 127. There are a few important features to note. There are two types of source file that can be used. There is the UTF-8 format. Uh, this is typically for non-English, uh, such as Chinese and Arabic, or ASCII, uh, which is standard uh, on your Windows machine. There are three types of format that may be outputted, L1, L4 and L8. And you should note that although not all types are visible 
they will still be generated and will take up memory space. So the user must be aware and judge which format and font to use. With this utility there is a dash S parameter which allows you to change the size of your font such as a 12 points or 20 points. A dash D parameter allows the user to change the location in graphics RAM where the outputted file will be stored in the FT800. This utility also runs on Windows from an MS-DOS command line window and as before you have to make sure that the source file is put into the same folder as the executable and the output is put into its own uh, directory where the name is based on the source file name and the font size. For more details or the ability to download these utilities please refer to the FTDI website www.ftdichip.com You can also see from this slide we have a comprehensive global network of support so please do not hesitate to contact anyone should you be having difficulty. Thank you for listening.